hey y'all what is up welcome back so today i'm gonna do a q a session um i have a few questions that i got on the form and i want to answer them a couple of a few of them are old <laughs> um but i found your question and if you happen to see this video i pray that that you receive some revelation and if you still um have any questions please feel free, free to reach out to me um and also go to your heavenly father who will give you the answers as well all right so the first question i have it says i believe but i am confused about what god is telling me to do so let's talk about it first the good thing is that you believe um that's wonderful that's that's good and then the problem is you are confused about what god is telling you to do so here's the thing whenever god is speaking to us it is very important to make sure we are in the position to hear him because if we're not in the position to hear him we will miss him and so some of the things that we need to do practical things right here are some practical things that you can do to get in a position to hear from God. And that's during this time, you want to really focus in and, and push away all of the external voices. And so that means that if you are indulging in social media, you need to spend some time off of social media. Social media, we live in a day and time where, where knowledge and information is just everywhere. Like all you gotta do is pull your phone up and there's information everywhere oftentimes we can be so busy consuming all of the information that we get around us that we cannot tell when god is speaking and when it's somebody else so i want to encourage you to spend some time off social media off youtube off of uh, google off talking to too many people your friends i just want you to give god the opportunity to speak which leads me into my second suggestion for you. Fast. Spend some time in fasting and praying to hear God. Spend some time asking God to open up your eyes, to open up your ears so that you can see what he is doing, so you can hear what he is doing, and to give you understanding to understand what he is saying. Spend some time reading his word God speaks to us through his word. And the best way you can identify if something is God or if something is something else is by understanding God's character. And the only way you're going to understand God's character is by reading the word of God for yourself. Read the scripture. If you don't understand the scripture, ask god for understanding it is only the holy spirit that can give you the understanding to be able to understand what you're reading in these scriptures okay you're fasting i recommend abstaining from food right but i want you to do what is best for your health and whatever you feel like you should do all right you're abstaining from social media that's wonderful okay if you're going to do this for a day or two or three let that be something that you decide. And if should you decide to abstain from food for a period of time, it could be a few hours, it could be a day, it could be, you know, a, a couple hours each day, it, whatever. Just make sure you check with your, your doctor. Make sure you're good with that. But nevertheless, I do feel that you need to spend, press in and, and, and seek God. The Bible says that if you seek him, you will find him. Seek him while he can still be found. Okay? So, I hope that answers your question. Um, I also sent you an email. So, here's the thing, guys. Whenever you send me a question on the form, I'm not going to say who sent me the... I'm not going to say your name or anything like that. So, whether you put your name in the form or not, nobody will ever know that you submitted that question. Okay? Um, I do ask that you put an email address in there because I will also send you an email with other information as well as a link to the video that I answered the question in. So if you fill out that quick, that Q&A form, leave at least your email. You don't have to leave your name if you don't want to, but I will not say who you are on this 
video okay all right so the next question if I'm healed from what I've been through why am I still getting triggered by it great question so if you are healed if you believe that you have been healed from what you went through but you're still triggered by it so for example whoever whoever did something to you you forgave them you've moved past it and you say you're healed but every time you see them every time somebody brings them up or the situation up you start feeling some type of way well i'm gonna let you know i'm gonna i'm gonna i'm gonna say this you may not be as healed as you think you are I believe that we go through different processes, different stages of healing. And although we may feel like we are healed in some areas, there still may be some areas that are not quite healed yet. And God has a way of showing us these areas. I did a video, um, and I'll link it, where I talked about um, the journey that God let me go down. And I thought I was healed, right? I, my situation with dealing with my uh, ex-husband and going through all this stuff I went through with him even after we got divorced, um, I had to go through a process of healing, right? And so here I am, I'm thinking I'm healed and stuff and then I have this dream. I have a dream where I get it interpreted and the, the guy lets me know, well, it looks like you're carrying something that's dear to your heart, something that's important that you hold to high value, but it's a heavy burden, it's a heavy load, and it's causing you so much pain. And I'm like, what could that possibly be? Here I am thinking that I'm healed, I'm good. But then God comes to me in a form of a dream to let me know that, hey, daughter, there's still something I need to work on with you. And so come to find out, I spend time journaling and asking God to show me what it was that I wasn't healed from. And he showed me that it was having to do with my ex-husband. And I was like, okay. So I wrote down everything that I could possibly think of. And what I realized is that I had not gone through the process of forgiving myself for what I did to myself or allowing things to continue to go on that I should not have. I, I didn't forgive myself for my own self-betrayal. The next thing I, I, did, I didn't, um, that was holding me back from my healing was my expectations that I placed on him. I expected him to be this certain person. Even after divorce, I expected something from him and he was not able to give me that. And it hurt me so badly because I thought in my mind that we would be this, that we would be able to do this and that, but we wasn't. It was the opposite, and it was even worse than what I wanted. So what I'm saying is that healing is a process, and if something is still bothering you, then I would say that you need to go back to God and find out why. Why does this bother me like it does? help me identify what it is that needs to happen in order for me to continue to heal if you have not forgiven that person forgive them i know it hurts i know that it was wrong that they did you wrong but you gotta let it go when i speak to my ex-husband today i don't feel no type of way matter of fact i could give him a hug and be okay and if you knew my story, you would probably wonder how in the world could you even consider doing that. But you know what? I have found forgiveness in my heart for him. I do not hold him captive in my heart in the, in the cell of unforgiveness because that only hurts me. This is what I've realized. I talk more about this in my book. Oh my God. So I have a book, y'all. And by the time this video is released, it is already going to be live on Amazon. I am still taking orders for the signed copy, but it'll be available on Amazon and it's in the link in the description as well. 
but this book is for those that are looking to heal it's to help people in their healing journeys to help you heal all the way <laughs> to grow spiritually as well as to thrive in your purpose and calling and so i encourage you to get this book i do but i am going to link a video um and i did email you the video to where i talk more about what i just got through speaking on my journey and what god said and, and um what he's it revealed to me in the dream and all of that i go into that um i go into that story in, in my book as well but i just i'll be praying for you and i want you to know that if you feel a way about something then something is still there that you need to deal with in order to receive your full healing okay all right so the next question i got is could you please do a video on how on how to overcome lust I am a woman, by the way. I love that. I don't love the fact that, you know, I don't love lust. <laughs> but I love that you put emphasis on that I'm a woman. Because it is oftentimes that we think that men are the only ones that deal with lust. And honestly, that's not true. So, I've been thinking about this thing here. I've been thinking about the topic of lust. And what is lust? What What is what does lust even really mean? And I think that it's important to draw emphasis on the difference between lust and desire because they're two different things. I do think that God created us to desire intimacy with one another, but prefer preferably in the parameters of marriage when it is intimate in that way. Um, and when you desire your spouse, it doesn't mean that you're lusting after them, right? It is a, a healthy sexual desire. And I think that the culture that we live in has um, caused sex to be a bad thing. That now when we think about sex, it is in the context of this is something that's nasty, it's filthy, and all of that. Okay? So there is a difference between desires and a, and a lustful desire. Notice that when we say lustful desire, it's like a type of desire that we have, but it is it does not mean that that is what, you know, the desire is. There's two differences. And so when you think about lust, you're thinking about, oh, this is what I want from that person. And lust can go for, it doesn't even have to be just about sex. Lust is lusting after anything that you see, right? And it kind of goes into covetousness as, as well. Because you see something that somebody else has and you are, now your mind is like, oh, I wonder how that would be if I had that. Or you look at a, a young lady or uh, for you because you say you were a woman. For example, you look at a man and you're like, oh my God, he's so attractive. Like, wow, he's so fine. And you start thinking about all the things that you would do to him and all this stuff. But in the meanwhile, you're not even thinking about what is his personality like in the inside. That is what I would consider lust. Because you want the man, you want his body, but you don't actually want him. And that translates the same thing for when a woman looks at a one, a man looks at a woman. You want her body and you're imagining what she could do to you and what it would feel like having her. That is lust. Okay? So it lust is a dirty thing because it takes the care out of the scene. You don't even care about the person. You don't care about what it takes to attain what you're asking for. You just want the benefit of it. You want the benefit. So how do we combat lust? The first thing I'm going to tell you to do is be mindful about what you are watching and taking into your, your, your eye gates and your ear gates. They're very important because a lot of people like to downplay, oh, well, I can watch this, this TV show. I can watch Love and Hip Hop. I can watch uh, Desperate Housewives. I can watch the movie. They have all the romantic sex scenes and it not do nothing to me. Well, I'm going to tell you that that's not true. Especially if you are dealing with lust. Especially if you are struggling with trying to remain pure in body. Right? God wants us to stay pure in our minds. So it goes beyond our physical actions, but it also goes to our mind and our heart. We cannot say that we are going to remain pure, but it's we're steady feeding our spirits the things of the world that are not good. The music that we listen to, 
the shows that we watch, they all play a part in how we think. You may not notice it, but eventually you start to see signs of what you are feeding your spirit, man. It's just like feeding your natural body. If you sit up and eat junk food all day, eventually your body is going to reflect that. You're going to walk around and one day you look all good and fine. You got abs or whatever and have you. And then you start indulging in all these fat foods, all this stuff that's not good for you, that brings no nourishment to your body. And then you get up one day and you notice that, dang, I gained so much weight. Wow, I don't look as good as I used to look no more. That's the same concept when it comes to you in the spirit. All of the stuff that you consume from the world. All of the music, all of the stuff, all of the conversations, all of the gossip, all of the people that you're entertaining, all of the stuff is causing your spirit man to be more desensitized to where you don't even notice that you are dying spiritually inside. Okay, and so I want to tell you, uh, just tell you what it says in the Bible real quick. I don't have your email. You did not leave an email for me. So I can't email you this stuff, but that's okay. I'm going to give it to you right here on this video. In Matthew chapter 5, uh, verse 27, Jesus talks about lust, okay? And it says, you have heard the commandment that says you must not commit adultery. But I say anyone who even looks at a woman with lust has already committed adultery with her in his heart. So if your eye, even your good eye, causes you to lust, gouge it out and throw it away. It is better for you to lose one part of your body than for your whole body to be thrown into hell. And if your hand, even your stronger hand, causes you to sin, cut it off and throw it away. It is better for you to lose one part of your body than for your whole body to be thrown into hell. So, here's, I'm going to read to you. I have a study Bible. Uh, if you don't have one, I encourage you to get one. A study Bible, a life application Bible, where it kind of helps you understand the text a little bit better. Okay? And so, basically, some think that if lustful thoughts are sinful, why not go ahead and carry out the lustful actions too? Acting out sinful desires is harmful in several ways. It causes people to excuse sin rather than to stop sinning. It destroys marriages and families. It is deliberate rebellion against God's word, and it always hurts someone else in addition to the sinner. Remember when I said that lust is wanting the thing, but not the responsibility that comes with it. So in the context of a person, you may want that man because he looks so wonderful and good, but you really don't want him. You don't care about him. You don't care about his thought process, the way he thinks, the way he speaks. You don't, you don't, you don't care that much. To want to be committed to him in life because that's why marriage the sex is for marriage because ultimately you should really have a love for that person the person that you are letting to be intimate with you like it's bigger than what the world tries to make it seem like sex is an intimate act of becoming one with somebody in body and in spirit it's a lot deeper than we like to portray it to be okay and so it says, where was I at? Simple actions are more dangerous and simple uh, than simple desires. And that is why desires should not be acted out. Jesus wants us to guard our hearts and minds to have proper attitudes towards the opp opposite sex. If you are consumed by selfish desires for someone who is not your spouse, you may need to seek help. Ask God to guard your heart and mind and help you see that person also as his beloved child. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I'll see if I want to read something else. So it says, uh, hmm. so Jesus emphasizes that if the act is wrong, so is the intention to be faithful to your spouse with your body, but not your mind is to break the trust. So vital to a strong marriage, abstaining from extra extramarital sex solves half the problem. Jesus wants our hearts and minds transformed also well, um, as well so that our thoughts have integrity and in concert with our actions. Jesus is not condemning natural interests in the opposite sex or even healthy desires, uh, sexual desires, but he does warn against deliberate, repeated filling of one's mind with fantasies that would be sinful and harmful to others if acted out. And so... I just think about those things and remember that God is very close. 
you always pray to him whenever you start having a certain thought here is what i always do and this is goes into like battling your your mind like the thoughts that you have as soon as i have a thought that is impure let's say i'm thinking about sex i'm like sex is good when i will enjoy sex in the parameters of marriage when i become married i will definitely be indulging in sex but as of right now i will remain pure in my body so this is practicing speaking against the things that you have coming into your mind right you're not going to allow your thoughts to get carried away and then one thought leads to another and one thought leads to another and then eventually you find yourself in somebody's bed you got to be careful with that. You got to speak against it immediately. You got to pray and ask God to give you strength. You got to ask God, God, why am I thinking about this? Like, why am I lusting after this thing? He will give you the answers that you're asking for. Okay? And so, don't this don't don't downplay this situation uh because it is very serious and if you allow your um if you allow that door to be open, don't be surprised when the act is played out. Just like this Bible said, this, uh, the, the application portion. If you're not careful, your thoughts will become actions. So you've got to get your thoughts under subjection and into captivity and get it cast out. Okay? It's more about your purity and your mind and your heart so that you can stop the action from taking place. Avoiding the action is good, but you've got to deal with the heart and the mind in order for it not to affect what you actually do. Jesus came to circumcise our hearts. He came to deal with the heart problems, right? Not just so much the action, because if we can think it, we can do it. So I hope that helps. Um, I recommend uh, that you get this book. You also can go if on the, um, what's the Bible called? The study, the, um, the Bible app. <laughs> I forgot what it was called. How I forget. Um, Go to the Bible app. They have a they have a, a Bible plan that you can do uh, for free, and they also have this book. This book is called Godly Dating One on One by T uh, Tavares and Safa Gray, I believe. This is a really good book, and it talks about uh, obviously godly dating, but sex is a topic that they bring up, and they also talk about purity and all of that stuff, and so. If you are trying to do things the right way and you're trying to date the right way and you're trying to get pure in mind, this is a really good book for you to go out and read and pick up as well, okay? Um, so yeah, Dolly Dating 101 for that. All right, so I've answered all three of my questions. Remember, if you have a question and you would like for me to answer it on another Q&A video like this, please feel free to fill out the Q&A form in the description. Um, and I will come on our next Q&A and answer your question as well as sending you an email with the answers and the link to the video. Um, if you need prayer, I have a prayer request link in the description as well. Feel free to send, submit a prayer request. Um, and then, as you know, I wrote a book. This book is for, like I mentioned before, it's for those that are looking to heal, grow, and to thrive into their purpose and what God has called them to do. It's to help you through the process of healing. I talk about some of my life stories um, in this book in conjunction to my lessons that I have learned and what God's word says and all of those things, revelation and all of that. So I encourage you to go out and get this book as well. It is available on Amazon now. And if you want a signed copy, then you can click the link in the description and you can um, order it directly from me and I will mail it to you personally. And so, y'all, God is good. And I thank, thank y'all for coming and listening to what I had to say and answering these questions. I pray y'all have a blessed day and peace.